What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Kind of Funny Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Greg Miller, alongside Forbes, 30 Under 30, a.k.a. the second best baby blues in San Francisco, a.k.a. the verified one at Tim Gettys. Let Tim host. How you doing, Greg? I'm hot. Are you hot? It's hot in California. So hot. It's real hot. What's Don't that like all that. about, you know? I thought I we fixed know. the ozone layer and that was going to fix the whole problem. Yeah. People lied. I should still be using the old hairspray. You know what I mean? Nah, I don't. Remember that was the thing? Danny, you, you're mm-hmm. old like me. You remember when that was the thing? Hairspray. That was, was going to kill us all. And then we stopped using that kind of hairspray and everything fixed itself. And it's gotten worse. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> now, that of course is Danny. Now, I need to put on my reading glasses here. Because since Danny was last on Kind of Funny, I feel like he's gotten several more big falutin titles. Right? So the one you know, of course, he's the founder and host of Gamer Tag Radio. Then, of course, he's the games editorial lead at G4 tv and now ladies and gentlemen he's the author of danny loves video games this is danny pena hello danny hello hello thanks thanks uh for inviting me over here man and uh yeah it's been a while since i've been on kind of funny it's been, like, i know right? time, i mean man. i don't know have you ever been on kind of funny prime because you're the games guy we put you on the games uh content. i think maybe once and i think it was with like, andy we had a, it was like a panel <laughs> it was a lot of us though mm. it was for a panel with Andy. I, I vaguely remember that. Yeah, we did the kind of funny podcast for Hispanic Heritage Month, right? You yep. guys, you came through that, that was uh, wow. Yeah, that was actually two years ago. Wow. Oh yeah. yeah wow. Time, time flies. Yeah. Time flies. And, and never got invited back. But thanks. <laughs> <laughs> well, here you are. <laughs> here right now, motherfucker. All right. I got ten mouths to feed on this company payroll. I gotta make use of the people that are here. God, oh, damn we're so it. hungry. Danny, I thought we were gonna start on a good note. <laughs> Kevin, show the link I sent you. I thought we were gonna Oof. start on a good note. Wait, you didn't see this, Kevin? You, oh, yeah, yeah. hold on, but I didn't see well, it. I can see this thing. Hold on, we're going to keep filling time. Then we're gonna Kevin, Kevin is fast. Kevin is fast. I He's trust. super fast. Yeah, don't worry about it. He's Kevin Coelho. He's the glue. He's there. Look at this guy. Look at Paris Lily. What a piece of shit, Danny. You know, he. so what, what's going on here? What happened here that he called you out? Oh, it's the normal thing that happened. We were talking on Kind of Funny Games <laughs> Daily today about the one and only Cyberpunk 2077. And Blessing mm-hmm. made a reference that he saw a Paris tweet about it. And I said something to the effect of, oh, what a surprise. How many yellow chairs does he have now? All right. Hey, you're not wrong. <laughs> I'm not so wrong. sorry, Danny. You know what I mean? You just for years had to work with this guy. We've only had him a few years. He's like a barnacle on our boat, Tim. We can't get rid of him over there on the X-Cast. You've had to like live with it. I feel like he's been part of your ecosystem forever. I, Once he gets in, you can't get him out. Look, I've been I've been telling Greg, I've been warning you for a while. And you're like, nah, nah, he's a pretty good guy, man. He's not like that. And look, look at all the Here trouble. Here we are. We all the trouble. We should have Have you guys ever movie. lived together? You in Paris? Oh, never. That will never happen. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'd rather be all alone. I don't want to deal with yeah. him. <laughs> there you go, Paris. <laughs> the truth. <laughs> we knew we'd get to it. We we'd get to it. Yeah, that's how yeah. it's got to be around here. Don't worry about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this, of course, is the Kind of Funny Podcast each and every week. Four, sometimes three best friends gather around this table. Each coming to talk to each other about whatever it is they want to talk about. If you want to talk with us, you can go to patreon.com slash kindoffunny, where of course you could write in to be part of the show. You could write in while you watch live as we record the show, like Madeline Stanley Murders with Mertens and Cody Hagler are. <gasps> Melissa Hagler's here too, don't worry. Of course, you get the show ad free. You can get the exclusive post show. You get all the other benefits we have for all the other kind of funny programming. However, if you have no bucks to toss our way, it's no big deal. You can get each and every episode of the kind of funny podcast for free on YouTube.com slash kind of funny roosterteeth.com and podcast services around the globe each and every week. Of course, you'd have ads. You couldn't write in and you want to get the post show, but you still have a good time. Uh, if you like them, their video games, make sure you're using the epic creator code kind of funny when you're using the epic game store or playing Fortnite or playing Rumbleverse. You can enter in on any platform and get a few bucks to us without costing yourself any more. Housekeeping for you. There are still a million reviews and reactions and all sorts of shit going on, Tim. You got the She Hulks. Mm-hmm. Is Rocky Rocky's yep. done now? Rocky's done. We're done with Rocky. Rocky Rocky's- Rocky in review is done for the time being because Creed got delayed. So sure. we're gonna catch up with Creed one, two, and three early next year. But I highly recommend people check out Rocky in review. It was a great time, specifically the last episode, Rocky Balboa. I feel like it was a really special episode of in review where we kind of reflected on in review as a whole and kind of what movies mean to us. So I, I definitely think everyone should check it out because if you've ever listened to in review, I think this one was a special one. Huh, okay. And we also got what you got the you got the Lord of the Rings going on too. You got that yep. happening. Yeah, Andy and Elise did episode one of Lord of the Rings on screencast. Uh, we've been doing Game of Thrones, me, Kevin, and you Andy have been about doing just, uh, Danny, you're married now. You understand mm-hmm. what it's like. You want to talk about just a terrible time in my life. 
where usually it's Jen comes, what, what do we all want to watch tonight? She'll say to me, and I'll be like, oh, we got this superhero show, this show. Now every night she's like, oh, I'm going to watch a Lord of the Rings. I'm going to watch a Game of Thrones. I'm like, oh, my God. I'm going to go out in the yard and just bang things together because I can't watch this crap. All right? God. These dragons. Oh, I'm an elf, everybody, and I'm on. A, I'm, I'm, I'm pulling a Wilson out here. I'm, I'm shipwrecked. I'm on. Oh, geez, Louise. This is as He's bad as Avatar. Daddy. I had it beaten. I had it done. Greg <laughs> Miller had won, ladies and gentlemen. Game of Thrones, bah, one grave. Lord of the Rings, bah, another grave. Avatar, another grave. All these terrible franchises y'all want to sit there and act like you love so much. Harry Potter, I was all right with, but I still put it in the grave. And now look at them all coming back from the dead. God damn it. Now, now, do you watch Cobra Kai? No. Really? Don't? Uh, See? No. no. Tim, Tim, you got to talk to your boy, man. What's going on? (laughs) Let's go down with I've been day. trying for years. I've been trying to get one day, one day, Greg one day. Miller will commit when he least expects it. And he's he's going to join us. He's going to fall right in line with the whole thing. Dude, Cobra Kai. Cobra Next, Kai. We are days away, everybody, days away. from this Obviously. thing coming back. Woo! Yeah. Yes. Let's go. Let's go. Thank join you join the movement. Join the movement. <laughs> I refuse to join the movement. I will not join the movement. Uh, thank you to our Patreon producers, uh, David Hazenga, uh, Nathan Lamoff. Delaney Twining, Gordon McGuire, uh, Fargo Brady. Today we're brought to you by ExpressVPN and Chime, but we'll tell you about that later. For now, Nanny, I know all about Gamer Tag Radio. Of course, if you don't, ladies and gentlemen, check it out. Amazing episode uh, when you guys had your anniversary with Phil Spencer on. I digress. I know all about G4, amazing channel slash, slash Twitch channel. Go check it out, everybody. Watch that. See what Austin Creed is up to. But what I don't know, real quick. Ah, fuck yeah. What do you got? I have to interrupt you, Greg. I got to say, I, I, I had a moment recently where The Bachelorette is back on TV. So I have YouTube TV. So I actually pay for real TV. And I'm cruising through. Episode ends. And I was just like, what, just, what does the menu even look like? And it pops up and you see all the different live TV channels. Three things down from ABC, G4. I see Golden Boy on my damn TV. And I know that's how this works, but I hadn't seen it in action. And I just got to say, I was pretty impressed. I was like, those are our boys. And they are on TV in a real way, which I know is not much different than me opening a YouTube app and opening up G4 or Twitch or whatever. But it felt different, Craig. It felt more real. So, Oh, when you see any of us on TV, it feels different. It feels way different than, yeah, just being on whatever, the internet, whatever. This is all fake and made up. But if your mom can find it, that's a big deal. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt your, your flow there, but I wanted I wanted to get that out of the way. Continue, no, Greg. No, uh, what I don't know a lot about is Danny Loves Video Games. It's your new children's book. It's up for pre-order right now, Danny. What What is going on? How did we get here? What is this? I see well, in the background there. Yeah, so uh, actually I got it right here. Ah, I got multiple Oh, copies. shit. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah so uh, yeah, it's called Danny Loves Video Games. It's uh, based on a true story about my life, like how I started with gaming and also content creation. And uh, I started working with my cu- cousin, Mr. Luna. He, he, him and his wife, they, uh, they worked on, they've been working on children's book now for a couple of years, and it's called uh, Two Quality People. Okay. And he was the one that pitched it. He's like, hey, Danny, you know, they've been very uh, good at, you know, uh, writing books of, like, you know, sending great advice to kids for, like, you know, dream big and everything. He's like, Danny, I would love to, to tell your story about how you got into gaming and and how you t- turn it into a career. And I just loved the idea. I was like, yeah, let's do it. So we've been working on it now for like a year. And this has been like a very, very passionate project for me, uh, okay, especially. Nice. Yeah, I talked about like how how my grandmother gave me my first gaming console, the Atari 2600, and how that completely changed my life for me uh, since, since then, you know. So I talked about that and, you know, how I started GTR and everything. And it's more for kids. And the reason is, is because you know when I was when I was growing up, I didn't really have a mentor for like how to get into the industry and everything. I had to like learn everything on my own, and uh, and then you know especially uh, my dad, he was more of like, oh Danny, you're wasting your time. You're playing games. This you know get a real job or that type of thing. So I wanted to release this book more for one to inspire the kids you know if they want to get into gaming or turn into a career or if they have any type of dream but also at the same time i want to convince and change the mind of the, a lot of the parents especially from the latino side too um where they don't understand about gaming and they will shut down you know if if there's like a passionate kid that wants to get into uh gaming either gaming design or content creation side you know so that's the main reason I want to do it, um, and it's been great. I, I can't wait for for the book to come out next week. It's a it's God, a pretty good next story. Next week already. Next week, and it's been a year. <laughs> it's been a long, long year. 
for us. I'm very excited, though, man. Very, very excited. And next week, actually, I'm going to Miami because we're having an event. We've been working with the uh, public libraries in South Florida. Yeah. So we're going to have an event where parents are going to bring their kids. We're going to read the book. I'm going to sign the book over there, too. And, um, and yeah, just interact with people there. They're going to buy the book. That's Dude, that's awesome. You say it covers your, your history kind of like with video games at the beginning all the way through content creation, like without spoiling the book too much and stuff. But like, when, what do you mean by the content creation part of it? Like, does it does it get to you kind of being an adult or is it more kind of like the kid dreaming of what could be? Yeah, it, you see me in a very young age, you know, uh, came, coming up with the name Gamer Tech Radio and I'm recording like my first episode with my brother. And then eventually I get older, you see me now you know, on stage getting awards and I'm, I'm having like a big speech, like that type of thing. You know, I didn't want to get too, too deep. Uh, yeah, it's a problem with kids books, right? You got to stay Yeah, it's a level. kids book. Yeah, yeah, a kids book. And I just wanted to keep it as simple. But I, the most important to me is is that message of like dreaming big, you know. Um, so, yeah. So now talk to me about how it, we talked about the broad stroke of how it came to be. Mm -hmm. But when they approach you and they want to do the story like are you what is i don't even know how to do how do you do an auto a biography children's book <laughs> with you, yeah. like, you know? well uh, to to keep it real with you i was working on on a on a book uh which i'm still working on i don't know if it's gonna ever come out or not but then because of scheduling i haven't uh really focused on that and then sure. my cousin was the one that came up to me and, and asked me hey danny i would love to, to do this so we sat down he was asking me a lot of questions about my past because um, we also used to do a lot of stuff with music when we were in high school. So we haven't worked since since then, you know. So, okay. um, um, so yeah, he asked me questions. I, I started answering, it, and uh, he just picked the best <coughs> parts and he presented to me once it was done, and even the drawings and everything, everything too. And I was like, oh my god, this looks really really cool. And like one moment which it was very important to show is like show, showing that moment where me playing. The arcades for the first time in new york and then my grandmother giving me the, the atari 2600 like you see me shiny like okay it's a totally different vibe like you can tell right there that it completely changed my life from 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 there on you know what i'm saying so but at the same time uh there's other things i wanted to talk about that's not in the book like how we're experimenting my dad's radio back then so i'll grab his uh his tape recorder I'll press record and I'm recording whatever's in the background. It could be, let's say, the, the TV. I have it sure. on. I'm, I have a, a comedy show, let's say, different strokes or something like that, right? Oh, yeah. So I'm recording it. And then at night, I'll, I'll put my, my Walkman on when I was a kid. I'm listening to it and I'm picturing like the scene or whatever it's going on in, in the audio. I'm like, okay. So I was always into audio very, very much back then. Man. And then, you know, TV and everything too. So. I have two questions from all that then. Yeah. Um, so you talked about, you know, video games as a career, your father having a reaction to that. But then you also talk about Latino in general. Mm -hmm. When your grandmother gave you the console, was that out of the ordinary? Was that her being cool? Did she see the spark in you? And was she one of the few people to encourage you? Or was everybody all right with that? Well, she doesn't know anything about games, but she noticed that we were always getting excited every time we would see a commercial with video games and plus us playing arcades in New York. So at that time in the, in the mid eighties, that's when uh, the Atari was going out of business. So they were selling their consoles for $50. I remember okay. that. And I remember mm. seeing the commercials, right? So then my grandmother bought three consoles, right? So it was for me and my cousins. And, uh, and from there, right after I got that months later, the N Nintendo system came out and I remember seeing at the store, and uh and i looked at the price i'm like oh my god this is really expensive and i looked at yeah. my dad and my dad was like nah <laughs> not we're not a chance. Just no. <laughs> and i'm like but i want that it has the robot and then i was like nah it's not gonna happen so yeah so uh, yeah so that's when you know everything started around that time for me man for me it was i remember uh you know wanting a game boy and I'd already, I already had a master system and gosh, what I, I Ooh, think master I still, system. Ooh, yeah, love yeah I was a Sega kid. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, and I think it was before I got the Genesis, but I could be wrong on that on time wise right now. Cause I got that for a good report card, but I remember wanting the game boy and my mom being like, I am not spending a hundred dollars on a video game handheld or whatever. And it was aunt Dell, uncle Scott who came through and we're like the, the heroes to buy that for a Christmas for me or whatever, to keep supporting my addiction. Yeah. And the thing is back then, uh, the industry was so different. We like barely get any games coming out. You know, it was like once or maybe a couple times a month 
throughout yeah, the yeah. year. You know, so yeah, now man, kids nowadays they should be happy, man. There's so much content everywhere. So that's, much games everywhere now, you know? and that's the thing too. And like you know, it's, they're so so accessible. With obviously, if you have the internet and the ability to download or whatever, or Game Pass and get this unlimited library of stuff, and it's just mm-hmm. this ridiculous thing of, I can't imagine. And I know it happens all the time, but I can't imagine being a kid and being bored, just with the endless entertainment options you have on tap. Whereas, yeah, for us, it was like, well, I got this game for you know, my birthday or whatever. I got to make it last two and a half months to the next holiday or the next thing that'll actually matter and you know, that I'll actually care about. After yeah, yeah, yeah and the, the games back back then too cost a lot of money. It was like seventy dollars even more yeah, for, yeah. for cartridges back then. Yeah, it's cool to think about how much games and like a lot of media has uh, transcended this as well. But I think games are are still in their infancy enough that it's kind of a newer trend that there are hundreds of games coming out a month uh to the point that you literally could not play any play everything where back then if money was an issue you could like there wasn't that many uh games that were coming out especially games that are quote unquote worth playing or whatever and i remember uh you know me growing up in the 90s it was like kevin and i we've told these stories a million times but like we're so lucky that we were our first console experiences were garage sale based where it's like for 25 dollars, i got an nes and the entire library of nes games and it's like pretty much we had a history lesson right there where we had the zeldas and the marios and paperboy and the ninja turtles game and you know what i mean it was just kind of like all of the games and it was like reading video game magazines after that I was able to be like, oh, what where are my gaps? What are the things that I didn't get uh, to to play or whatever it is? And it's like that experience is just not even possible these days because the history of video games is no longer a grand total of twenty franchises. It's like <laughs> you know what I mean. It's just there's so much more. Like no matter how many collections are out, no matter how many new games are coming out, it's just like it's impossible to keep up with everything. Yeah, you you know uh growing up uh i used to live in also in dominican republic for a couple of years and uh my mom was one of the people that whatever i come whatever idea i'll come up with she's like let's do it you know uh she was really really easy to talk to about that so i told her one time like hey mom i would love to start a video game business uh i have let's rent an office i have a bunch of super nintendos and sega genesis how about if i charge people to, for them to play my games and she's like I, I love the idea. Let's do it. So, idea. yeah. So I will charge for like 15 minutes, 30 minutes <laughs> or an hour. And people will come and be like, hey, Daniel, we'll like to play uh, Mortal Kombat 2 or Street Fighter 2 or Donkey Kong Country or whatever, you know. So uh, I'll let them play. And yeah, I was getting money. And I got so much money that I even bought a motorcycle in Dominican Republic. Because That's of awesome. Too. And I was God in my damn. early, early teens when I started doing That's that. my thing about Danny, if you don't know, ladies and gentlemen. He is the definition of the word hustle. This guy never stops, and I've never. You are one of the people, Danny. I mean, it, no jokes aside, I'm not, I'm not doing a Greg Miller bit. You are on the incredibly short list of people I think who deserve all the success they've had and deserve so much more because you are. From the moment I've met you uh, to where you are now, you've always been just the dopest motherfucker. And I mean that in the way of like you're, you're kind and you're welcoming and you're friendly. But then it's the same way where you will do whatever you can to help someone. Like I've seen that time and time again, and that is obviously personal, but then also professionally, just in the way of like so many people you meet are like, oh, you don't know that person. I should connect you sometime. And they forget about it and they never do the thing. You say that at a party on a Friday and then Monday morning you have an email connecting you to that person. And like, that's invaluable. You don't see that a lot, man. There's multiple reasons why I do that. One is I know how it was back then when I started, I was not getting any help back then. I had to do everything on my own. Right now that I have access and have context, you know, why not give back as much as possible? You know, I I talk to you guys about other things like, Hey, let's, cause you know what is Greg to me, if you guys are successful, it will open the doors for, for us, for everybody else that's doing it to the same thing. I've never seen you or you guys or any other podcast as like a competitor at all for sure. you know I, I see this as like yo we're in this together man you know what i'm saying 100%. so yeah i've i helped you know many many people paris too when he got into podcasts that one i know, regret that one i wish now i regret it with, we'll talk that behind the scenes then uh <laughs> but uh but yeah like i helped a lot of people man now what i'm what i'm trying to do too especially with this book i also have it in spanish i'm, I'm trying to to influence and, and and inspire a lot of the uh people in the latino america side you know latin america side um because uh, you know one thing that I, that a couple of them already mentioned to me when i was in the american republic 
they said that they, they feel left out that uh, mm-hmm. a lot of gaming companies don't come over here the you know typically a lot of the companies will go to like the biggest country the biggest cities like let's say mexico or mexico city or in, yeah. in brazil stuff like that right but but a country like let's say puerto rico which is part of the united states and and also dominican republic companies don't usually don't go there for like events or anything like that so what i did um I talked to a company, a very company. One of them was Unity for for us to create a free workshop to help the, the the indie developers over there to learn how to code and everything. So I did that, and I did a speaking engagement too for for also content creators that were there too. And and I did it. We had like a good 300, 300 plus people there at the event. You know, awesome. I'm trying to I'm trying to do more of that stuff. You know, to give back because you know it's we have a lot of a lot of easy access here. Uh, in the United States, but outside of the United States, they're, they're struggling, man. You know, so sure. um, one one time, you know, Twitch last year they put me in billboards at Times Square to celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month. That I was part of their campaign, and one of the things I told them, like, hey, can you put uh, the Dominican flag there uh, in uh, part of the billboard? And they're like, yeah, 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 sure. And the reason I did that is to inspire a lot of the Latinos and uh, a lot of the Dominicans that hey, dreams do come true. You know, I was there. I took my mom and surprised her, you know, my Hell dad yeah, was yeah. Him too. That was like that that to me is the best feeling in the world. Like money comes and goes to me, but seeing that from like family, the like sure. the reaction and seeing that that, you know, my mom supported me since day one. My dad was kind of like, huh, ah, and now he's like my biggest supporter now. Awesome. That's the best feeling in the world. Best feeling. Top Square, man. That must be huge. I can't like that is just, like such a, a cool moment, especially because like at that time you were you still living there then, or did you go back no, for that? Actually, I was living here, and I went uh, over there, and I went there with with my wife, and uh, and I got to see it in person. I got emotional because I was there twenty one years ago for, at an event at Xbox. Uh, it was uh, the Times Square launch of Xbox, launch, the original yeah. Xbox, and that's when I got I got to meet Bill Gates and everything there. And uh, you know, being there and seeing that billboard, I was like, yo, it felt like full circle, man. You know. Um, it was wild to me seeing it was very crazy i love that like, anytime there's like a historic xbox event and they like celebrate the anniversary you have a photo from it mm-hmm. <laughs> like that's yeah, how hey, in the everything. culture you are man hey, I, have, I have that i have you know i went to the gamecube uh event that they, i think it was called uh q club they went around oh my the god country, yeah yeah and i went to that one that was a lot, yeah that was, that was a lot of fun a lot of fun but i have a bunch i actually like my first event that I went to was Sega. They invited me randomly. Like, hey, I was not a content creator at creator that time, but uh, it was the launch for Sega Net, I think it was. And oh, uh, yeah, for the damn. Day. <laughs> and I went there. Damn, like, oh, dude. Man, this, I'm playing. I'm playing uh, NFL 2K1 online. What? Like, yeah. It was yeah. <laughs> when does it go that for you? Old. Like mm-hmm. through the looking glass, that it becomes the career. Right. Because I know I've talked to you before. So much of this is, you know, you're, you're grinding. You're doing these things on your off time. You're doing the, the podcast on your off time. When is it that you're able to make that jump? And what happened to when it, it could just be you're just a you know, full time content creator? Uh, I, I could do that now if I want to. But honestly, like, I just love my job. I love my team. Uh, I love. Um, oh no, no, I'm sorry. I don't mean that. I mean, when did you go from being? Oh, from there. Oh, yeah. I now, like, that, was like, a, that was not a jab at what you do uh, now. Like, when are you no, going to f- tell G4 to fuck off? No, I, I very much consider this a yeah. content creation. You made you it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I actually, I think it was like maybe around 2008. What was the year of Santa Monica? The Santa Monica E3. That was 2007. 2007. I think like around that time. Because uh, you know, I I got money to attend and to fly out to E3, but then I got EA to sponsor and to get my team to also attend E3, and I was like, oh my god, this is awesome! Like I've never never experienced that before, you know. So I think there on and then getting a lot of the sponsorships from people from other companies too, and uh, I think that's when I, I noticed the change for me um, gotcha. because because when I when I started. There was no applications for like to subscribe podcasts, and it was sure. two months after I left E3 2005. That's when Steve Jobs was on stage, and he's like, "We're adding podcasts to iTunes." I'm like, "Oh my god, this is great!" So that's when our numbers just went on top. It was so many people downloading, you know, because of that. So that's when the conversation started changing in 06. That's when a lot of gaming companies were contacting us to 
to be on or to sponsor or for like sure. opportunities and everything. I, I think it's really important to point out that you're, we're talking about this as like, oh, this is like your the beginning of the career of content creation and stuff. Mm -hmm. This is kind of the beginning of content creation period where we're talking about a time where you made a podcast before podcasts were a thing, right? Like even the name Gamertag Radio, it's like there was this, the, you're talking about predating RSS feeds. Right. There is not yeah. even a delivery platform for these things to exist. And like you were there in that initial swell of making content that it, it doesn't need to be on the radio. It is kind of using the Internet as the distribution platform that now we all take for granted in a million different ways. But it's like for you to have been there in the beginning talking about video games in that form, like there are very, very, very few people that were there then there was a handful of them right you look i think mm -hmm. back even to like the one up crew right like they they the egm crew was like transitioned to one up and then they did their their podcast that was incredible as well but mm -hmm. uh gamer tag's been there since day one you know and it's like i think that that is such an important thing that not only is it one of the first video game podcasts period it's one of the first podcasts period yeah, well, I also got to give props to Orange Lounge Radio because they, they don't get a lot of props. They're still around. Uh, and they, they started like around the same time I did uh, in 2001. This is when I started uh, PSO Radio with All Family Star Online. And they've been around still to this day. They're creating content. So props to them. But, you know, at that time, you know, now it's super easy. Like upload your, your content, RSS feed automatically will update, right? Back then... When I was uploading content like that, I had to manually update the RSS feed back then. And one, that that's that was very, very annoying to do that <laughs> you know, every, <laughs> every, every week. And then another thing, too, um, there was no there was no podcast app. So we had to depend on a lot of the, the apps that the community podcasters made at that time. And there was websites back then that. Uh, there were like charts and everything too by category same thing really similar to now but back then and it was from uh podcast that doesn't exist anymore but uh yeah all the podcasters were promoting their stuff there man because there was nothing available at that time you know now it's super easy to to go to like your app spotify apple or any other devices i mean apps out there to to listen to other shows man so yeah but if, it's a lot easier nowadays man <laughs> Yeah, I don't you know, just to go back into the history stuff, because I'm such a nerd about this stuff, like, there's mm -hmm. also you're talking about this time frame of like that 2006 2007 era er, that you kind of like saw the next level of growth, like, it makes so much sense with the iPod being introduced in, in what, like, oh, four or something, but then over the next couple of years from that iTunes, turning into this new thing that was trying to combat the the Napster side of things, or at least monetize the Napster and Kazaa and LimeWire and like all the illegal downloads and turn it into a legal business that then eventually killed CDs and record labels for how they used to be and turned them into something new. But alongside mm -hmm. that was, oh, hey, here's these podcasts that are free. And so it's like having this platform that people were extremely excited about, having this product that people were clamoring for, that when they get it, they wanted as much content as possible. And you couldn't buy every single album you ever wanted then unless you had the money but so many people were like oh there's this free category here that's just mm -hmm. these radio shows these podcasts so it's like i'm sure that must have been to be there at that time was must have been such a unique boon for your product yeah yeah that was very it, it, i I'm, I'm thankful to be around that i was around that time because i got to see the transition of you know not no apps at all to itunes and then slowly you see other apps like Spotify coming in and everything. So, but the thing I give props to iTunes, what the Apple team is that they, they the company was the first one to have music in their music store. I, I know after that, Spotify's tried to do that too. Pandora have done that too. Um, and it's, it's been a game changer and it's easier now for, especially as a podcaster, it's so easier now to, to just have your content out there more than ever, you know? Um, it, it was a very awesome experience being there, man, from during that time too, man, seeing it. To time travel from that even further back, you were talking about taking your dad's tape recorder, record mm -hmm. different strokes, listen back to it later. When you're a kid doing that, are you thinking you're going to go into traditional radio? Are you thinking you're going to do television? Are you thinking you're going to do something completely different? Like, what, what, what did you know you had? an aptitude and an interest in it that was far different than other people? Yes, because one, I was always listening to the radio since I was a kid. 
uh, back in the eighties, especially in New York, you know, they were, had like a hip hop show, but it was no hip hop stations at that time in the eighties. So I would listen, <laughs> I would listen to it. Like, let's say on a Wednesday night, Thursday night, I'm there listening. I'm like, Oh man, this is pretty cool, man. So that and seeing, seeing people with turntables and I always wanted to get into that. Then in the nineties, that's when I really, really started getting into that because now I'm going to like college radio in Miami. Sure. We will do like mixtapes uh, back in the early nineties too. And, and I'm there on the mic, you know, at house parties and everything. So that was like the beginning stages for me and also learning how to promote because I will go and, uh, and promote a lot of the music labels in Miami or, or outside. And also worked with a lot of music artists. So that, that, helped me so much to get better on promoting my stuff now uh either in person or or online and stuff so another thing too um seeing my uncle with a video camera that was something that that come also completely changed my life because i wanted to also be involved with video somewhere somehow and then eventually i got a job uh, at a discovery channel in the early 2000s that's when i started get into like TV networks and stuff, you know, but as a kid, I always wanted to get into radio and, and TV for me. But I, I used to do even fake movies with my cousins. Like I'll oh, yeah. get Mario paint from the super NES, right? Hell yeah, you did. Yeah. So, and we'll do like an intro from there and we'll do like, mm -hmm. a, let's say we're, we're filming uh Jason, right? So like Jason takes over Miami. So I had this terrible graphics from, <laughs> from Mario paint. We do the, the the sound, the special effect, like That's the cat yeah. now. <laughs> and then my cousin will dress up as Jason, and like I, I'm recording while I'm in the movie too, and and I still have those those home videos, man. It looked terrible back then, but dude, I have to wonder for the amount of people who are like us who ha who fell in love with their family's video camera and just like your mom, yeah, you know, my parents bought it for like recording Christmas mornings, and then yeah, me and my dumb friends are running around backyard wrestling eventually but i feel like there's gotta be if you had the camera you were making friday the 13th or you were making psycho you were you were you were just em emulating whatever it was because we all yeah. had these yeah I'll how also many times did you and your friends do the oh didn't see you walk in there it's yeah, like, all right, yeah. Guys, we get the joke we get it <laughs> yeah no that was a lot of fun that was a lot of fun but you, look i i learned how to edit like that too uh with two vcr so oh, I'll, god I'll, I'll do the the pause play pause record play you know so uh yeah man so honestly like that's how I, I learned everything on my own like it wasn't you know me going to school and learning how to edit and everything i, I learned everything on my own man you know so dude it's yeah. funny you bring up even mario paint like mario paint was such a huge moment for me and i i i think that a lot of people share a very similar story to what you just did where it's like the the game gave you the tools to like mm -hmm. kind of learn and it, it taught it taught you how to teach yourself different types of art right whether it was the music whether it was the the really simple animation but just the concept of animation that they taught you there of like having the different frames that you can make and put one after another to be able to make these intros and yeah it's like i remember using my vcr to record that intro and then record footage of me playing tom and jerry on the super nintendo and it's like what am i even freaking doing like why am i doing this but then i would edit it together to watch it back just because like it it felt fun. I felt like I made something. And like to look at what we all do now, it's like, God, you could totally just draw a straight line back to our origins. Yeah, and I bet your parents were like, what, what is Tim doing? Like, see, for me, my mom will watch a lot of TV. And I'm like, damn, I want to watch Ninja Turtles. I want to watch cartoons. But she's watching TV. So I figured out, and again, this is like the early days. I figured out a way how to record the cartoons while my mom is watching watching the 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 news or you don't last know time. what you have nowadays Yo, people this one uh, and, and i remember like you want to talk about like who we all are and what it was like you know what i mean like that yeah. was like those pats on the back from your parents or any other adult of like what are you doing and it's like i can teach the vcr what channel to watch without changing i remember those days too and i remember like because i remember the old days of like running like having one tv on upstairs that had the finale of lois and clark on for a season and downstairs was i guess the simpsons or something like that and i remember running back and forth between commercial breaks before i figured it out and you tell your parents that and they were like what and i'm i'm setting timers like a psychopath right where it's like <laughs> well i'm gonna set this thing to start here but it might run over so i'll do this and then the power goes out and you have to reset up the entire schedule again yeah and you record the commercials and everything there too. oh yeah yeah oh, and that's something we miss nowadays like i 
I my entire I don't have a VCR anymore, but like my entire run of tapes back home, like of everything we recorded off of TV, and like I had like a library system where I numbered every one of the VCR tapes, and then had a notebook that chronicled everything in there. I can't wait one day to sit down with nothing to do back home and pop it in and see all the stupid Sears and McDonald's commercials from 1989. Oh my god, Dude, it's incredible, man. There's yeah. YouTube channels that are dedicated to just that, and like the amount of nights where I have to wait to midnight for like she hulk or whatever disney plus shows coming out and like gia goes to bed at like whatever let's just say 11 and i have an hour to just figure out what i'm going to do with my life the amount of times recently i just put on youtube channels of like commercials from 1992 from a very specific place that isn't even necessarily san francisco it is just such a great time and time flies because you just get hit with nostalgia for shit that you like gushers commercials and you're just like I haven't thought about this specific commercial, but I can tell you every single aspect of it, like from memory. It's like such a fun time. Yeah, you know, at one time I was browsing on YouTube, right, and then uh, I found a commercial, a TV commercial. Tim, you're not gonna believe this. Wu Tang Clan promoting Game Boy Color. Love that. <laughs> Look Love at it, it with the graffiti yeah. and everything, and all Davy Bass and RZA was like, "Oh yeah, Color Kid." Like it was <laughs> <It's like that. laughs> early '90s, yeah, man, but. But yeah, that does. I love those moments, man. It brings back a lot of memories of like growing up and and just you know remembering what we had at that moment at that time, you know. So yeah, kids get they got it so so easy nowadays, man. You know, but even now, if there's ads and stuff like that recorded and, and show that to to you know the, the next generation, they will love that, man. Seeing the old school sure, commercials, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, the, the, yeah. the dinosaurs. You know what I mean? All this too. Even the idea of like, I dude. I remember my sophomore year of high school French project where, yeah, we had edit, we had shot everything on the camcorder and I was like editing it with the two V the, the camcorder stop and play and then the VCR recording it and then wanting to, for the bloopers at the end, play music over it. And like, it's like two in the morning and I finally had the boom box with the RCA cables hooked in and it had to be this like, I, there was like one second of static because I just couldn't figure it out. So I had to be on the ball of like, I'm record, I press play, I hit record. And then when it gets to the transition, I rip the cables out from the camcorder and shove the cables in from the audio device to get the music just to play over it like a psycho. Yeah. Do you, remember, you guys remember uh, switching the channel three or channel four to play oh, yeah. the, the game set? For me, I was always a channel three because for some strange reason, channel four looked kind of weird for me every time I'll play a, a, a console there. It was very, very weird. So I don't know. But, uh, that channel annoying. three boys baby let's go a team channel three yeah i was three for sure no, yeah three for sure yeah yeah and, yeah. If, and, and like <laughs> even that having like it was like uh the rf units right like that would plug in mm-hmm. through the coaxial cable in the back and like being ride or die for that way too long to where friends would come over <laughs> and be like why are you playing your n64 this way you have the composite cables there like you plug that in and look i'm like you're wrong you're wrong and then they, they left and i plugged it in it was like a brand new world like everything was so oh, bright. Yeah. i was like oh my that god better. look better oh that was because yeah. i had it like the laziest like brody setup for mall rats in, in high school where it was like the n64 was next to me on the console unit next to the chair and then it was mm-hmm. just this giant coaxial cable that ran all the way to the tv across the room and so then yeah. I had to sacrifice that, but it was for quality. Yeah, I, I it completely changed me when when I played Super Mario World and uh, I think Final Fight and and other, the Super Nintendo era when I connected the the cables there, the, the yellow, white, red yeah. cable, and then uh, I will have the TV blast. I'm like, oh my god, look, it looks beautiful. It lo- it sounds good. Oh my god, games will never look better. Stereo, stereo. <laughs> that was yeah, a big but... feature. Did, what, what did the talk boy mean for you guys? Because that was key for me for my content creation upbringing from uh, Home Alone. You know, the oh, little yeah. the handheld too, talk Boston, boy. New York. Yeah. Yeah. Like that thing. I mean, they marketed the hell out of it to kids, obviously. But like it was such a huge thing for like remixing things, recording things, using the voice, change your voice effects and all that stuff. Talk Boy, I don't remember Talk Boy. What was Talk Boy again? It was the in Home Alone, Lost in New York. It was the little mm-hmm. recorder he had. And I'll tell you why you don't remember it, Danny, because you know Tim, he's a young kid here on this podcast. The reason I didn't give a rat's ass about the Talk Boy was is that it was a novice's tool, Tim. It was a baby's toy. I had whatever RCA, you know, put the cassette in, shut it, talk into it like a reporter, move yeah, it around. Yeah, that's what I had. Oh that's my what I had. God. I had, I had the adult thing. I had the quality <laughs> thing, Tim. I didn't need this mass-marketed Kevin McAllister piece of shit. It was <laughs> legitimately my favorite toy in the world for 
half my life. Like it legitimately is the coolest thing ever. Like I could not imagine something in the early nineties being cooler than having the same device that Kevin McAllister had in home alone that he was able to trick those buffoons with, you know what I mean? The voice changing feature on it is revolutionary. You know what I mean? That's wild. I think it was the one thing that was the one thing it had that like my adult tape recorder that I had didn't have. Cause yeah, me and my, I was like you, Danny, where me and my friends were making, you go to a sleepover and I'm documenting everything like a Vietnam reporter. <laughs> like I have these cassette tapes of like what's happening at 3 a.m. and 3.30 a.m. And then, yeah, you're doing a stupid show with your friends and making it up. And, well, you know, once we had the video camera, it was just mimicking SNL all day long. You know what I mean? With skits that we didn't write. We just made up for no reason, making dumbass movies all the time. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't remember at all, man. But yeah, I'm, I was like you, man, like using the. Either the tape recorder or boombox, and I have that also as a as a tape recorder for me, man. Mm. You know, mm. yeah. But there was funny. no special effects, <laughs> no special effects. I was gonna say or for like, the cameras, what 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 I remember most is like when we hit that perfect age of like we have a camera and jackass is very popular, but we don't <laughs> want to get hurt. So now we're trying to fake these videos and and make it look as real as possible. So we're figuring out like practical effects. Oh, so much yeah. fun. Yeah, we yeah. the infamously we we made a video when we were at a vacation. Thank you for bringing this up, Kev. Uh, me, Kevin, and, and my brother were on vacation with our parents, and uh, we made it look like my brother was about to jump off of this like insanely high balcony. Like it, it was, was like, like a twenty foot he drop. Yeah. It would have been bad news. And then we cut the camera, and then we filled my brother's clothes with pillows. <laughs> and he was wearing a hat, and we threw that off the balcony. <laughs> and this stupid ass fucking thing is just falling and just hits the ground. And then we go down and film it. And he had my brother come up, like, oh, acting all hurt. And we showed our parents, and they were they got so, so upset mad. They got because so they mad. believed it. They believed it. And it was just like, because the quality was just bad enough on these stupid yeah. handicaps, especially at night. They're like, we pulled oh, it yeah, out. Night, you're getting anything but, pulled. Yeah, you can <laughs> That's why Greg was wearing the hat because it was like, oh, we have a hat and we can hide his face. <laughs> <Perfect>. <laughs> this is exactly the way to hide it. Yeah, yeah. No, those were the days. Those were the days. Thank. I still, even though I, the, you know, like it would have been fun to digitize and put everything up. Thank God we could not digitize and put everything up. Thank God. Because me and my friends were just stupid kids. We did not know what we were doing or saying, and that would not have gone well. <laughs> Yeah, my, my cousin been, recently she's been finding a lot of tapes. With it, with it, okay. <laughs> no, Ben's my... awake, everybody, from his nap. <laughs> his favorite thing to do is walk around with a big wooden puck and slam it on the wood floor. <laughs> oh, so sounds funny. like your boy. Yeah, it sounds like my boy. He likes, he likes yeah. to be loud in the center of attention. <laughs> yeah. No, my, my cousin's been sending me a lot of the tapes that she's been digitizing from, from back, in, back in the 80s and 90s. And I've been watching it recently. I'm like, oh, my God. Time flies, man. I had, I had hair at that time, too. Wow. <laughs> wow. Memories. <laughs> Rest in peace. <laughs> yeah, my uh, the guy uh, I ran the Backyard Wrestling Federation with is doing a documentary about the Backyard Wrestling Federation. And so he needed some of my tapes, and I lent it to him. And then he found in there a whole bunch of home movies, and he digitized them all for me, too. So yeah. it's like this trip of, yeah, every, exactly. Me and my friends just being a bunch of idiot clowns with our stupid. It's like, yeah. I'm, I, I'm opening one right now, and it's like, we're doing, I guess, an SNL interview in front of, but it's just in my basement. It's got all these like Christmas decorations on the table. It's totally mm -hmm. funny. Do you remember Saturday main event? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a couple of videos from that. I think the, there was one where Hulk Hogan was fighting with against. I think it was was it Andre the Giant or somebody, and there was two refs that were twins. Okay. Yeah, oh, yeah, the Hebners. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and they popped up, and they're, Hulk Hogan was confused, like, "Hey, what's going on?" So I have that also on video that I recorded it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, super old school. I'm gonna reveal you... something right now that uh -oh. I have never said. Oh my god! And uh -oh. I'm gonna regret immediately because I'll never hear the end of it. But it's a true story. Recently, I had to uh, clean out my mom's house, and that resulted in me finding a lot of. Our, the VHS tapes from our history and stuff. And I started watching a couple to try to see if I could find any good clips to, choice you know, put moments. on choice moments, all that stuff. Of course, there's a lot of great stuff. A lot of stuff of me, little Kev, little cool Greg, all that stuff. There's also a video that I came across of my mom and dad straight fucking. And I, it definitely turned me off of wanting to look at these fucking tapes. But no, that's a real thing. No, so, no, you know, no, I Tim. had to see it. So now that's out in the world, y'all. God. I don't know what to tell you. Content creation isn't all good. 
It's not uh, all good, y'all. Tim, Nick, and I will gladly angle? screen the rest of the tapes for you. We will screen all the tapes for you. Don't yeah, worry about it. Yeah. Yeah. So, hey, just be careful. Be careful searching through old VHS tapes, everybody. I That's what, was it labeled at to. all? I feel like your dad labeled everything. Yeah, I mean, there was a lot of labels, but, you know, didn't say that. Didn't wow. say that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, on that note, tape. ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you about <laughs> patreon.com slash kind of funny. Over on patreon.com slash kind of funny, you can write in to be part of the show. You can get the show ad free. You can watch the show as recorded, just like Bander SN is, uh, Cody is, and Chance Carter are. If you're watching live, thank you so much, and thanks for supporting us. Uh, they'll get a post show too, but guess what? You won't because you're not listening on patreon.com slash kind of funny. So here's a word from our sponsor. This episode is brought to you by ExpressVPN. Using the internet without ExpressVPN is like checking in your baggage at the airport without a lock. You don't know who's looking through all your stuff, finding all of your Nintendo Switches, your PlayStation Vitas, or all the other things that you're hiding in there. When you go online without a VPN, internet service providers, ISPs, can see every single website you visit. They can legally sell this information without your consent. Nobody wants that. That sounds like a bad time for everybody. You can browse more anonymous it's easy to use and it works on all devices. I love ExpressVPN. It is super simple to use. I feel safe across all of my devices, knowing that whether I'm on my desktop or my mobile phone, people aren't getting in there. I'm safe on the internet and what I look at, what I browse, that's mine. That's for me to know. Secure your online activity by visiting expressvpn.com slash kind of funny today. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N dot com slash kind of funny. And you can get an extra three months free. Expressvpn.com slash kind of funny next up shout out to chime like a cool breeze chime is a refreshing way to handle your money there's no monthly fees no maintenance fees and no minimum balance fees so it's how banking should be done and when you need access to your money you can do so fee free at more than 60,000 in network atms at many locations like most walgreens or 7-elevens you can also send money to anyone even if they aren't on chime fee free for you and no cash out fees for them chime no monthly fees no vibe killing fees sign up for a chime checking account it only takes two minutes and it doesn't affect your credit score you can get started at chime.com slash kf games that's chime.com slash kf games chime is a financial technology company not a bank banking services provided by a debit card issued by the Bancorp bank or stride bank and a members fdic out of network atm withdrawal fees apply except at money pass atm in a 7-eleven location and at all owl point or visa plus alliance ATM. Other fees such as third party and cash deposit fees may apply. Chime.com slash KF games. We're back. Danny, well, one thing we haven't asked you, and I want to make sure we drive it home several times in this podcast. Where can people get Danny Loves Video Games? Uh, right now we have it available on Amazon, so people could uh pre-order or buy it starting September 15th. Okay. Uh, great. So yeah, if there's a lot of um people buying also through Barnes and Noble, then it will eventually will be in stores across the country. Oh, nice. On. Yeah, it all depends on the support and everything. So this is all self-publishing right now for us, man. Wow. So, I didn't yeah. know that. That's awesome. Yeah. And well, it's also go- Walmart, walmart.com too. If you want a short link, I made one. Kindoffunny.com slash Danny will take you to the Amazon page. You can pick it up there. Yeah. And order it for yourself. Yeah, just look up Danny Loves Video Games. We're there. It's super simple. Super easy. Mm-hmm. Uh, Danny Grant Burton writes into patreon.com slash games. No, he doesn't. Patreon.com slash kindoffunny. Sorry, force of habit. And says, if when you die, you meet God or a godlike entity, what would you say or ask? Oh, that's a great question. Oh my God. It's all you get from I the kind say? of funny best friends on Patreon. Uh, the what would I say or ask? I just want to know if my family's gonna be okay after mm-hmm. I'm gone. I think that's that's very important because I'm very close to my family. That's a really good answer. Yeah. What yeah. what would okay mean to you though? Uh, that they're gonna be okay without without me being around. You know, I'm very like I'm very uh, close to my family, so I'm always you know making sure that everything is okay. You know that they're that they're good. You know that they're not suffering or anything like that. You know, so that's that's what I mean by by okay. 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 Mm-hmm. Wouldn't you feel bad though if he's like, no, they're not gonna be? And you're like, oh shit. Yeah. I, I got I an wish. eternity of that on my mind. Yeah, because my goal is is this. My goal is to work as hard as possible, so my family doesn't have to go through what I went through back then. You know, for me, you know, I grew up in the projects in New York. I had to, you know, 
I was bully when I was a kid, you know, um, in the eighties, that wasn't easy for me, man, you know, and, uh, but it helped me to be a better person, man, you know, especially learning a lot of stuff from the streets, you know, cause, uh, New York, living in New York in the eighties was not easy at all. Let me tell you, for sure, yeah, <laughs> it, wasn't, yeah. it wasn't easy at all, but I've seen but, documentaries. It didn't look good. <laughs> no, no. I mean, I mean, I remember my taking my dad walking me in Times Square. That was all sex shops. Yeah. It wasn't like how it is now. Now it's it's clean. You know, Disney's there. All what, the Broadway when Ju- shows. When Giuliani came in in the nineties, right? That's when he that's really when, cracked. Yeah, the- mm-hmm. that's when everything changed. But yeah, they, New York was really, really bad in, in the eighties, man. You know, but um, I think um, in the nineties, that's when I I moved to to. Um, to to Miami. I was living also in the Dominican Republic between New York and, and, and Miami and stuff. So around that time. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'm not close to my family. So I watched uh, William Shatner, The Unexplained last night. You seen this thing, Tim? You ever heard of this show? No, I haven't. All right. So here's it's old. Well, it's not old, I guess, but it's old. there's multiple seasons, right? And I just ran into it on Netflix the other day, me and Jen. And as you know, I'm a weirdo. So I grew up loving a show called Rescue 911 which was hosted by William Shatner. And it was like real 911 calls then reenacted and they showed you what happened and stuff like that. And then I also loved a show called Sightings that had nothing to do with William Shatner, but was like the even lower brow Unsolved Mysteries. And I also loved Unsolved Mysteries. Lower brow where it was just like (laughs) aliens and ghosts and shit that I'd be like, I can watch this. And I'm like, you know, a little kid, not a little, little kid, but a kid. And I'd watch it and I'd get really scared, right? And I'd be spooked and like lights on kind of sleeping thing. And this is the union of them where it's, a bunch of crackpot weird theories and shit. And then William Shatner hosts it. And William Shatner, let me tell you, Love this. this man just chewing up the scenery out there. This is, I'm mm-hmm. sure it's just a paycheck to him, but he's giving it his all. He's walking yeah. out from behind video walls. He's doing like the whole, duh, 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 and then like turning and looking at the video walls. I'm having a great time. Uh, but I watched one last night called the Oak Island Curse, which is this island up in Canada, right? That they, they, these like whatever the i don't even know the 1800s these people went over to the island when they saw strange lights and then they found this depression and then they started digging and every like 10 feet or yards they run into more wooden logs and they worked on it for years and they finally got down there and there's granite thing and a cipher that then they moved it and then water came in and they went nobody knows what's down there six people have died if a seven person dies the prophecy says that they'll actually find the treasure. <laughs> i want to know what the fuck's down there you know what i mean what this shit is on this island that's so i'm gonna get up there to god and i'm gonna have like and i don't you know i like when people on patreon danny over explain their question i usually have a lot of follow-ups grant yeah. doesn't say like is this my one question you know what i mean but it's like my most pertinent conspiracy theory unsolved mystery question right now i would probably think it through and have more that i would like to ask maybe i would find a better number one than oak island but right now after falling asleep watching that last night before playing some more video games i'm interested to find out what's going on over there yeah you i was i used to watch uh also mysteries back then god was robert very, stack of Come on. that was that was very like, creepy too man dude there is not there has never been and will never be a theme song as creepy as the unsolved mystery never um, you're like yeah, oh shit it had that it had that X, X files vibe is it gonna know? be a ghost an alien or just a kidnapper yeah <laughs> just a, yeah. <laughs> yeah the ghosts i was the ghosts and aliens those are the ones i was really scared of i was like oh for my sure. god this is creepy yeah yeah for sure yeah yeah, yeah. and he's walking with his coat oh, oh yeah yeah smooth. yeah right Move, well, they, re- they redid it and it just didn't work obviously as much but it's because you know again you know what ruined the world cell phones you know what i mean you yeah know, have you noticed there's been a dramatic drop off in ghosts and bigfoot sightings now that we can record <laughs> two seconds. sucks yeah i still look, i look fond I look, I look back fondly it was you know i think i was at ign but it was like probably the early days i don't know if the iphone had infiltrated yet when those hunters were like we have bigfoot we killed Bigfoot and they showed like their freezer that had like a Bigfoot and ice. And everybody's like, they might have fucking killed Bigfoot. And everybody was like, no, they didn't. And it was like, can we be sure? They might have done it. And there was like a day while they waited for Bigfoot to thaw to be like, oh, now it's a rubber suit. But it was fucking cool for a while. <laughs> it was it where it was like, shit, then? anything can happen. Huh? So was it just a dead guy then? No, it was just a suit. They just had a suit for their 15 minutes of frame and they got it. They got it. Uh, I'll find you an article for it. Uh, wow. Tim, if you die and then meet God, what question would you ask? I feel like I would I would have to just keep it simple and it kind of put it on them where I would just be like, so for reals, what's up? And just let them answer me that question, however they think appropriate. Because I feel like there's some secrets. I don't know what the secrets are, but I know they know the secrets. So I feel like I need to just ask them like, so what the what, what what's going on? You know? Yeah. And let them let them Fair. start from there. Because like 
I have a lot of, I get existential often when I'm just sitting alone in my thoughts. Really, you start thinking, ever wonder why we're here? What's the point? Where does it end? Does it end? Does it start again? All that stuff. Mm. But like, I feel like all those questions I want answers to. But I think what I really want to get to is just like, what's up, man? Like, what's what's the deal with living? You know, who wants the deal God's, with being alive? God's out here doing stuff? Maybe not doing stuff. Sometimes they do stuff. Sometimes they don't do stuff. I don't, I say they right now because I don't. Is it he? Is it her? Is it? I, I don't even fucking know. You know, no idea. Sure, no Fair idea enough. at all. Fair enough. So Fair. it's like I'm just going to be excited to like get some answers. But like, really, what I need answered is just like, what's up, y'all? Yeah, you you sound very passionate about getting the, the questions answered. <laughs> yeah, it's true. I need yeah. to, man. I need to know. Yeah. Everyone yeah. needs to know, but yeah. I don't think we're ever going to know. I don't think that's how it works. Yeah. Do we come back? Do we stay? Like how, how that goes? What do you think? That's a, me? Yeah. That's let's great, go around the table. I, I don't know. That's a great question. <laughs> that's a great question. I think, I don't know. So, sometimes. Okay. So this is a story I, I've never talked about to anyone. This is the first time here, but. Ladies and gentlemen, this man is in the podcast it. hall of fame it. and he's never <laughs> podcast about this. This is an exclusive for you. Yeah, right so, there. so one time, you know, when when I met Rihanna, my my wife, when I met her for the first time, I felt like I met her before, which is strange at that time when I first when I first met when we first met, right? So then, I never talked about this with my mom and my dad. So I I take her to Miami, where you know they meet for the first time, and my dad said the same exact thing, and I'm like, wait a minute, dude, yo, what's going on with this man? You know, it was just a weird it was a weird vibe at that moment. But I'm thinking, like, I think it is possible that we come back in a different, different way. You know, not quantum leap ways, but you know, <laughs> energy recycled, energy recycled soul. Yeah, I think so. That's in my opinion for me. But what about you, Tim? I, that's the thing, man. It's like I, in my heart of hearts, mm-hmm. I believe it's just all over. I think that you live your life and then you die, and Cut then to you're you're every. It's it's just gone. It's just everything's over. And Power so, off. There's no. <laughs> There's no ghost. There's no soul moves on. There's no reincarnation. There's none of that. But no matter how much I believe that, just the fact that we exist in general makes me think that like it can't just be that. Like it feels like this is why I want to be like, yo, what's up? It's like I just need to know what's up. Like what's the point of all of it? Yeah, you know, yeah. <laughs> hearing myself talk right now, I sound yeah. ridiculous. Yeah, there's no way to like, talk about it and not feel and not sound yeah. ridiculous, right? But it's like, like real talk. I just, I feel like even though I believe, it's just you live, you die, and it's and that's it. In the same way that people we know, they live and they die, and all, our memories help live. They live on forever with us and all that. But it's like, but they are gone. Like they don't get new stories as far as we know, and as us as the living are the only people that. Get, the, get to know things and on this mortal plane it, then that's all that matters to us so even if someone's reincarnated and we don't get to know that it almost doesn't matter I, it gets really it gets complicated really fast guys yeah but, no but same I, but i but i think i think it's also your memories goes away but you still it's the same soul you get what i'm saying like that comes back maybe yeah i think so yeah. i mean personally yeah. for me you know seeing um what was the name of that, that that movie from Disney Pixar? Was it Soul? Soul, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a pretty good. That was a very deep movie. Oh, Thank incredible! You, yeah, that was yeah. really good. Incredible. Yeah. So, I mean, that's what I think. I think it's just the memory goes away, but maybe you come back. I mean, yeah. I, I'm I, curious I, to hear. I, go ahead, Kevin. I was going to say, like the the experiences are so much of what you are, and one of those things. Like, I feel like I get what you're saying about that. Like, the soul could be the same, but it's like. Then it's starting fresh, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what I think. Greg, fascinating, fascinating. Who knows? You know, I, 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 I don't, I don't, I don't think anything is off the table. You know what I mean? I think that's the biggest thing. I, I've gone and had, you know, had the conversations on the shows before about God and religion and, and, and you know, just in general, spirit, soul, whatever you want to do, whatever, right? And so. For me, I'm, I, you know, I'm very much of the belief that there's more than this. And I, it's, it's just for the fact of like Tim's question of like, what is it all about? Why is it, what is the deal with everything kind of thing, right? Where it is for me of like, I can't fathom there being nothing ever, nor can I fathom 
there being everything always. Like, and I, and don't get me wrong. Yes, I believe in the Big Bang. Yes, I believe in, I'm saying like, but how did any of that stuff come to be the first time? And you can't be, well, it's always be, it's existed. Well, what does any, like, you know what I mean? Like, that's what you get in this circle of eating your own tail while you talk about it, right? But the, the example I've always given for why I believe, like, there is more to it. And granted, remember, of course, this is on top of just talking to you right now. This is 13 years of Catholic school. So, like, there's a whole bunch tied up in here, what, oh, but different things. And I'm not talking about religion, right? Like, I, I'm not a practicing Catholic. I don't think they have it right. I don't uh, uh, agree with their interpretation of putting somebody between me and God. That's not my jam. Uh, but it's also the fact of even if everybody's got it wrong about God, like, I just can't fathom what my eyes are doing right now. You know what I mean? The rods, the cones, the reflection, the, 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 the sense of touch, this, that, and the other. And I mean, the computer monitor, the water bottle, the fact that it isn't just everybody living in a cave, smashing rocks together like in Kansas. Like, there is more <laughs> going on here and just such complex processes that I obviously, I shouldn't say obviously, I believe in evolution. And yes, I believe, you know, I mean, I, I see it all there. But like, how did you go from nothing? How did you go from water, uh, one cell organism to this? Like, how... Like, there's just so much going on that I can't imagine it's just all, you know, golden planet. It's just all best case scenario. It's just we're one in a million and everything happened that way. Like, I don't know if there's, a, you know, a big guy at the end in a white robe with a big beard. I don't know, you know, if there's a... Maybe it's a little who, hat. Maybe, maybe maybe life has a Kevin Feige. Maybe. I don't think somebody's, you know, putting necessarily, uh, uh, you know, like, again, back to Catholicism, right? Like, I don't think uh, whoever, if there's a higher power or whatever, gives a shit if you touch yourself or who you love or what, you know what I mean? Like, I don't think that's what we're being judged on on a nickel and dime basis. And like, you know, I go back to all the time, of course, that like, I feel like the luckiest person in the world each and every day for a number of different reasons. And I don't think it's strictly, be I don't think it's like, well, I'm, I, I do think, I don't, I try to be a good person and I get good back. And I don't yeah. think that's, I don't think, and whether you want to call that just karma, whether you want to just call that positive thinking, whether you want to call that God, whether you want to call that whatever, like I'm trying to be a good person and I feel like everything's worked out for me. And yes, there's a million different pieces to put to it, but I mean, that's where you get into this again. Let's eat our own tail thing, right? Of like, I was born in a very privileged position, right? With my parents and where I grew up and what my upbringing was long before I was a good person. So then it's like, is it predestination it is everything set up that, 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 like you can i i feel the biggest thing when i get into these conversations right is that inevitably i just get to the idea in general that we're talking about is just too big like it's too big and it's too complex and there's just not enough hard evidence right because like science would tell you big bang this that the other you grew up that way and that's how it is right and then yeah to tim's point you die and it's lights out and it's over and I, and that could very well be, I'm not at all sitting here saying that's not the case, but I just don't necessarily believe it. And maybe it's that I don't want to believe it, but I also do feel like a presence in my life again, not like, you know, woo, like, like a spooky, rest. <laughs> but again, like, you know, that, like I've said it before on podcasts of like, and it's the dumbest example, but it's, it's my example of like an inordinate, inordinate that amount of streetlights go out when I look at them. And I'm not saying I'm doing it. I've just always taken that as one of the many signs that like, hey, something's going on here. Like there should never be this many streetlights going out when you walk by them. And it's not, again, a creepy thing. It's a comforting thing of like, there's something there. Again, I don't think that person is a thing is watching me and judging me or protecting me or doing something like that. But I feel like it's part of the whole thing. Part of the whole right. fucking matrix we live in. Yeah. Yeah. Uh it's interesting you say that because like my dad would always say that to me too. And like when he said it, I started noticing it too, the lights going on. And I don't yeah. know if you saying it lessens it towards like to me. But like, I don't know. Like I ha I'm still on the fence whether or not like I like that you also notice that, you know, like you just take something away from me that I've always noticed. Maybe I did. Kevin. Maybe that's you I'm here feeling to it makes it feel less, you know, special. But I felt it my whole But then life. again, that's not something you and me often feel, though. Or I mean, that other people often say, right? So even if it I is mean, just I, you I, I me. mean, yeah, like up until you, like my dad was the only one that had said that. And you, you've said this previously. And every time you say it, I just kind of like, huh. Like how many other people are like feeling that? Are people just not noticing it? Do lights go? Like my, my logical mind immediately starts being like, oh, shit. Well, those are probably old lights that are all salt. So they're overheating. 
you know and it's like it ruins it thanks for that Craig. still out of all the time for them to go out it's when you're there i get what you're saying i get what you're saying well, i believe like i believe what, what, what greg is saying because look even as a kid let's say one day i don't want to go to school I'll, I'll i'll mention to my mom oh mom i'm sick but then i become sick you know, because uh, <laughs> I'm because I'm, cause I'm I'm thinking about it so much. It's the same thing what I said earlier about the billboards. You know, my wife was the one that said manifest that, believe in it. Oh, for sure, and it's gonna happen. You know, and it's the same thing of all the stuff that's been going on. Like Greg, you were saying, is it karma or what of you being a good person? Um, and and then you're seeing a lot of good things coming coming to, to you now. Like for me, I always been. And this is also from my mom's side. Like we're very always giving back to the community. Like every year, sure. my mom will go back uh, to Dominican Republic where my grandmother lived, and it's a very poor area. And she will go there with tons of like school supplies and 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 stuff for kids. And she she will give it away to them every summer. She will go over there uh, in honor of my of my grandmother that passed away a long time ago. So uh, and she's I always been seeing that from my mom, and I always always. Um, well, I also want to give back to the community as much as possible. Like, like, look, there was uh was it last year when when Paris hosted the the Xbox showcase? You know, like I got emotional, I cried, you know, because I know the stuff that we went through just to be here, just for him to sure. be on that stage, man. You know, and a lot of people don't know, and 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 that's the thing. Like when I saw him, I felt like I made it too, you for know, sure. and it didn't it didn't seem like a like a competition or anything like that, you know what I'm saying? So um I do believe that if you do give back a lot, man, and, and help as many people as possible, it's gonna come back to you. But that's not always been my focus. You know, I always wanna, you know, help as many people as possible for me, man. You know, and now I'm seeing the past two, three years, I've been seeing a lot of good things been happening for me, you know, and but I'm still gonna have them entirely like I have to keep on going and and help as much as many people as possible for me, man. Before we get out of here. Mm -hmm. I sent Kevin the link. Bigfoot hoaxer says it was just a big joke. Uh, this is from 2008, so I wasn't wrong, right? I was talking to this guy in Atlanta, Georgia, who had it, right? He had a rubber suit. Now, what's fascinating about when I Googled this guy's name, and, and I was like, Bigfoot hoax? I also got another one from the Herald Times. But this one is from six years later, in 2014. Hunter confesses that Bigfoot body is fake, dot, 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 again. This guy tried to pull the exact same prank saying he killed Bigfoot. Didn't get as big around this time, all right? Rick Dyer, who made huh. the news earlier this year with claims of killing a Bigfoot, has admitted it was a hoax. The hairy eight-foot body that has been he's been hauling around the country as a publicity tour is a dummy made from latex and camel hair. <laughs> the news shouldn't be a shock. After all, this is the man who announced back in 2008 for that he had a real-life Bigfoot body. News conferences were held. Stories appeared on reputable websites like nationalgeographic.com. But when it came time to reveal the evidence, Dyer's, yeah, Dyer's uh, Bigfoot turned out to be nothing more than a rubber ape costume. I love it. You got to appreciate the commitment. And it's just like, it's at some point it becomes social commentary where he's just playing all of us. He's like, you know, I know I can get away with it. I'm you all remember it. Balloon Boy too? You remember that day? Oh, I remember Balloon Boy. I was like, oh my no. God, he's going to fall. Oh my God. And it was you remember fake. this, Tim? <laughs> no. Oh man, this guy had this, this, I don't forget what kind of balloon it was, but this guy was working on some kind of fancy balloon in his backyard, not like a hot air balloon, but like a weather balloon. And then it, it, it took off and he called 911 and he's like, I think my son is in it. And so then it was on every news channel nationally all, people following this fucking balloon in the air. And then eventually the kid just turned up like in the hamps in the hamper at home. <laughs> and then when they did the interview on TV about it, the kid was like, yeah. And then daddy said, hide in the hamster hamper. And it was like, Oh, oh this entire no. thing. was Balloon boy was fake from the beginning. Mm -hmm. See, I, it just makes me happy that when you said that, I thought that there might've been some real story. Cause you guys remember the, the, the raccoon a couple of E3s ago where there was that raccoon that was just scaling a building. Oh yeah, and like the that. world stopped as right, Twitter just turned to, to. What year was that? What he died? I, I mean, raccoons' life like spans aren't that long. <laughs> so statistically speaking, I was just saying like R.I.P. Rest in peace, that badass. You know what I mean? He made it up. Thanks, he made Kevin. It down, Thanks. But it's been a couple yeah. years, so it doesn't look great. He he definitely made it up the whole building, and like I just I think about him every once in a while when I'm feeling down, and I'm just like, if that little dude could survive and make it all the way up there. I can do a lot more than I think I can. 
I have bad news. A raccoon lifespan is two to three years. So that little guy's oh, dead no. for sure. For oh, sure. Oh, man. That's very short. My God. You know, you <laughs> live, you live more than an hour at approximately 50 miles. Uh, the balloon landed about 12 miles northeast of the Denver International Airport. When the boy was not, fa- was not found in, it was reported that an object had been seen falling from the balloon and a search began. Later that day, the, bl- the boy was found hiding in his attic. <laughs> <laughs> suspicions yeah. of a hoax soon arose particularly after an interview with wolf blitzer on larry king live that same evening asked why he was hiding falcon said to his father you guys said that um we did this for the show god damn it oh my god what a why little can't snitch. we just find a big what a little snitch because he's not real greg that's the reality that we have to look into he's not real otherwise one of these fucking nature cameras that just set up know, for like you know 36 talking about it all years now. would have caught to, it we used to believe that we could have a bigfoot now there's cameras everywhere yeah. there is yeah. however i do want you to know there is a, a unexplained season one william shatner episode that is uh uh, mm-hmm. what is, uh, uh, uh vampires and werewolves so i'm excited to watch that one soon very entertaining <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this has been the Kind of Funny Podcast. Each and every week, four, sometimes three, best friends gather on this table. Each coming to talk about whatever it is they want to talk about. If you want to talk about Danny's book, order it right now. Kindoffunny.com slash Danny. You'll take the Amazon link. Or if you want to do Barnes Noble, go there. That way you'll get into bookstores and you can have it that way. Uh, Remember that this episode of the show uh, went live first on Patreon.com slash Kindoffunny, where you could get it at free. You could get it with the exclusive post show we're about to do. You could get it. And get your questions read. You could be in the chat like Melissa, Keegan, and Murders with Mertens are. Of course, if you don't have the time or the money or the power, I guess. Yeah, maybe your power has been turned off like it might be in California. Uh, to watch on Patreon.com slash Kind of Funny. You can get it later on YouTube.com slash Kind of Funny. RoosterGeek.com and podcast services around the globe each and every week. Uh, use the Epic Game c- Code. Kind of funny if you're buying some games or if you're buying some Fortnite stuff or if you're buying some Rumbleverse stuff. Uh, Danny, where can people keep up with you? Uh, you can find me on Twitter or any other uh, social media. Just look up Godfrey, G O D F R W E. Also, you can find me on any podcast app. Search for Gamer Tech Radio. We're there. Subscribe, follow us, give us a review. Hell yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, we got a post show to do. But until next time, it's been a pleasure to serve you. <laughs>